Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 11 Beta 2 to developers. This was unexpected as they normally release these on usually a Monday or Tuesday, but they released this and it came in at a couple gigabytes for me. And that's because I wasn't running Beta 1 on this phone because... Well, it was terribly buggy with horrible battery life. So I put beta two back on this phone to use as my everyday phone so that I can give you some updates and it still has some issues, but let's take a look at the build number. The build is 15 a five, three, zero four I, and this particular build uh, really fixes a lot of things. Now there's a couple little tweaks here and there, but the actual fix to this has to do with pages and pages of updates. Now, when I say pages, I mean 17 pages of bugs where there are 33 categories of resolved sections. And within that there's different things like Kindle books now works and third party keyboards now work properly. So if you have one of the third party keyboards and you're typing here and you have a Google keyboard, something like that, it, should work properly now where it may not have worked before Bluetooth issues have been fixed third party issues from other apps and things like that CarPlay, drag and drop migrating from Android and on and on and on. So many different things have been fixed in this. There's also 19 sections of new issues. So when you create a beta of software and you add a bunch of features, you fix things, other things break, or maybe you're adding features and other things break. There's actually a lot going on under the, under the hood of this particular update, not just from modifications to the file systems, everything. There's a ton of little tweaks here and there. Now, one of the things they enabled was do not disturb while driving. So that feature they showed off in the keynote and when you're driving, it will actually know that you're driving and it will pop up a dialogue on your screen and allow it to just blank out so that you can't actually use it. It'll completely blank the screen. You won't be able to use it until you come to a stop or tell it that you're the passenger. So that's just a safety feature that they're including with iOS 11 and that's been turned on. It was not active in iOS 11 beta one. Now they still don't have drag and drop on the iPhone. In fact, I couldn't get it to work at all before you used to be able to kind of grab in here and maybe drag and drop. Now it's not there. Hopefully we'll see that turned on in the future, but for now it's not there. Now there's not normally a bunch of new features from the original version. You know, we have the new app store, things like that. There's not usually a bunch of different features within it until usually the September announcement of iPhone eight or whatever it will be, there won't be a ton of different changes or features. So we won't really see that until then. There are a couple little tweaks though. Like I said, if I go into messages and I type hi, as you see here, hold down, go to the message effects. Now this is orange. So we have orange highs when we say hi, we'll run there again. One of the other little tweaks they've done is a search within Apple music. And I guess the chain, they've changed the search options here. So your library, Apple music, it just looks a little bit different. They've tweaked that, uh, just to make it look different. This could change in the end. Also, there's more locations in the file app. So if you're using the file app, oh, it's right here, the file app, you've got different locations outside of what you normally would have. If you have different things installed, I don't have anything other than that installed. Also, you'll notice here's one of the new bugs is see my calendar app is blank. You can fix this by restarting. And that's one of the bugs that they've noted is a new, a new issue. So you may get that on some of the native installed apps like files, weather, things like that, that may appear in beta two. And I know a lot of you are going to ask me, should I install beta two? And the answer is if you have to ask that question, you really probably shouldn't. And the reason I say that is they're very buggy. There's battery issues. And usually by the time the public beta comes out, which is usually around the time of beta three or the end of the month, it's stable enough for you to use things like search and everything seem to be working. Okay. It's smoother. And actually the benchmarks aren't too bad. You'll see there's a benchmark of 3491 and 5934. And I don't have anything to directly compare that to right this moment, but it, that's actually pretty decent, but this really doesn't matter too much as that's going to change by the time it comes out. So that's it in this particular update, there's tweaks and we'll see more tweaks and hopefully a few new features that have to do with iOS 11 running on an iPhone eight. So if we have something like that, but control center is the same touch does feel a little more responsive. Things do feel a little bit quicker. If I open this, things do feel 
a little quicker as I move around 3D touch. Occasionally there's some frame rate drops. You may have just seen it there. So I don't expect this to be perfect and it will get better by beta three, beta four. Usually it's, it's pretty well uh, done or at least tweaked enough that you can use it by that point. And then they'll figure out the feature set later on, but things are opening quicker. And I did notice some bugs when I was closing these that hiccuped and locked up already. So it's still not ready for primetime use, but it will be in the future. And we have basically September to look forward to the final release to develop or to the public rather, not developers, the public release to the public beta testers, probably in a couple weeks. Let me know if you've found anything new though, in the, in the comments below. Also, if you'd like this wallpaper, I'll leave a link to it in the description below and be sure to subscribe to me on Twitter as I'm always talking about when these updates come out, things like that, or follow me on Twitter rather. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.